<laughs> we back in ATL, shawty. Let's get it. <laughs> Mo, and we are here for Love and Hip Hop ATL. This is gonna be my first time reviewing this season, y'all. So strap on your seat belts. And let's get ready for it. Um, as you come in, let me let me go and get a little ski taste. There we go. I'm gonna take a little bit of that myself. I'm just saying, ain't nobody got time for that shit, y'all. This is Am um, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta season nine episode one. Bobbing it off. As always, church announcements, y'all. Before you leave, let me know you stopped by. Subscribe to my channel if you are not already, and then make sure your notifications are turned on. Y'all, this first episode, of course, n n mm, the first episodes of Love and Hip Hop, in my opinion, are never really good. It's just giving you an introduction or catching you up on where everybody has been. So that's pretty much what this one was, just kind of giving you a refresher on where the hell everybody's been, what the hell everybody's been up to. But look here, hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. I got my uh Moscato BB. Moscato BB. Hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's go and get right on up into it. All right, y'all. So look, Young Jock is on the radio. Him and Kendra, they still going strong. They prepping to get married, right? Uh, Mimi and Stevie J, they getting along good. They getting ready to have Eva's 10th birthday party, y'all. 10th birthday party. That baby getting big. Looking just like her goddamn ugly ass rat face ass daddy. But that's cute though. She finna have a little party, whatever. Kirk and Rashida celebrating 20 years of marriage. I don't give a shit. Scrappy and Bambi, they got mama issues like all, like always. They always got mama issues, especially with that goddamn mama D. She a hot ass goddamn mess. Carly Red having issues with her nigga. What the fuck is new about that? And Sierra might be going to court. Okay, so let's break all this shit down because that's basically everything that's, that didn't happen in this first episode. I'm just going to break it down for you real quick, right? Okay, look. So it starts off there at Eve's birthday party. She has a little African safari themed birthday. It's real cute. Stevie J is there. We didn't see Faith there, but um, Mimi is there. Her girlfriend Ty is there. Rashida is there with her um, son Carter. I think um, Scrappy was there. Um, Bambi was there. It was a lot of folks there, whatever, right? It was just real cute. Everybody coming out having a good ass goddamn job. Jock was there with one of his eight, got eight fucking kids, nigga. All right, then, nigga. You do you, my nigga. He was there with one of his eight goddamn kids. One of the eight. Um, I guess that might be the one that's around the baby's age. So I don't goddamn know. I don't care. I don't know. The nigga got, I bet he get good at come to. Well, now them baby mom. I don't know. That's too much to goddamn worry about. So Rashida ends up talking with Kendra. She was like, Kendra, this don't give you like baby fever, nothing like that. Kendra's like, oh, hell no. What the fuck I need baby fever for? That nigga got eight if I'm feeling that goddamn itch, and that's not the kind of itch that I have. Rashida ends up telling Kendra that she wants to invite her to their 20-year wedding anniversary, that it's going to be cute or whatever. Everybody's going to be there, whoop-de-whoop, -de -whoop, yada, yada, yada. It was a cute little boy. Bambi and Scrappy, they at the house the next day. They, um, they little baby Breland is so freaking cute. He just look itty-bitty like a little peanut with a little bit of... A little, little struggle ponytail on his head. He's so good. I love me some little bald headed struggle ponytail ass babies. They so goddamn cute. They got uh, Mama D ends up coming to the house. Child Mama D with her fake ass acting. She got this quote unquote assistant that's helping her. Now, apparently, because of her drinking, it caused her to have like either gallstones or kidney stones. Ended up rupturing. I don't know, her bladder is something, and she didn't have to have a bunch of goddamn surgeries. So now she's walking with a walker. But y'all know Mama D, she's so goddamn extra. Now, she says that this has scared her, woken her up, because she wants to be there for her son, I mean, for her kids, and for her grandkids. And so she just wants to turn over her life. You know, drinking and fucked up. And now she want to give her life over to a high power and stop goddamn drinking. Hey, it is what it is. It can goddamn happen. Oh, something got in my eye. Is that you, Rona? Rona don't get in a bitch eye. Oh, Lord. But, um, 
She says that she wants to slow down with her drinking and she was a low key alcoholic. I didn't know that. She said she wants to slow down with her drinking. This nigga Scrappy done bought a breathalyzer to check her ass out to see if she's actually been drinking or not. Baby was like, nigga, you bought a breathalyzer for your mama? He like, yeah, y'all trust this motherfucking bad shit crazy. Blown to this shit, crazy ass woman. Now, Jock and Kendra end up going to the pet shop because they're looking for a puppy for his twins. Their birthday is coming up, right? One of his 50 them goddamn kids. Now, she tells him, look here, I've been telling you to book this consultation for this vasectomy for a minute now. Why you ain't did the shit? This nigga is, I don't understand why men are so afraid of getting a vasectomy. They're not cutting your balls off, man. They're cutting off the supply that makes the nut that makes you have the babies. You fool, you gonna still have nuts when you leave from there. It just ain't gonna be nothing swimming in them nuts. But they still gonna come out. You gonna be fine. He afraid that that's gonna like take away his manhood and all of this shy. So men are so ignorant when it comes to that, I swear. Later on, they end up actually going to have a consultation for the vasectomy. The doctor is breaking down everything that's what's gonna happen. How you gonna lift this up, snip this, burn this. This nigga jock about to pass out in the goddamn corner. He don't know what to do with his goddamn self. Later on, the doctor's like, I'm gonna let y'all niggas chop it up because you looking a little queasy and I don't wanna be around for this bullshit. So I'm gonna need you to holler at your woman see what the fuck y'all gonna do. Other than that, y'all waste my goddamn time. You know what I'm saying? I could be clipping some other nigga nuts, but sit, I'm sitting up here talking with your goofy ass. They end up talking. Jock gets pissed off. He ends up leaving. He don't wanna clip his nuts. Nigga, you should. You got eight goddamn eight Hey, nigga, them a lot of kids, nigga. I'm just saying, live your life, you know, procreate. But, nigga, just stop. No more kids. No more kids for you. So Sierra's with her kids. They end up going to a bowling alley that is, um, this memorial is being held for Shooter's son. Y'all know two years ago, he ended up getting, I think he was shot and murdered. Um, and so they're doing, like, this little memorial thing for them there, right? So she goes to bring the kids so they can bowl. Um, did I say skating ring? I didn't, if I did, I didn't mean to say skating ring. If I did, I don't know. Anyways, they have the damn bowling alley. Mo, get it together, girl. Too many of you. <laughs> damn, damn mosquitoes. So they have the damn bowling alley. Now, she says that she wants Shooter to come and testify because she's got this court thing coming up. Now, apparently, I don't know if it was at the memorial service or somehow or another, she ended up getting into a fight with one of Shooter's other baby mamas. The baby mama was pregnant at the time. Now she's facing 13 months in jail because the baby mama said that she whooped her ass when she was pregnant. Sierra claims she didn't do nothing, so she wants Shooter to go and testify on her behalf saying she didn't do nothing. Shooter like, look here, I come from the school of no snitching. I ain't seen nothing, I ain't heard nothing, I don't want to do nothing. Now, he's in his feelings because he said, where were you for the three months that I was on trial for my son's murder when... I had to go to court for, you know, trying to figure out who it was that killed him. Where were you for three months? Now, all of a sudden, you want me to come and testify on your behalf. He tells her, you know what you did and what you did and didn't do. So, I'm not going to get up in the middle of that. Child, they end up going back and forth. He like, look here. Basically, you on your own. I don't know if he just doesn't want to get in the middle of it because these are two of his baby mamas. He don't want to be in the middle of it. Or he's doing this to be spiteful against her. Or... She really whooped this girl ass when she was pregnant. And uh, he don't want nothing to do with that shit because he know that your ass is wrong. Either way it go, he was like, look at bitch, I'm not going to be able to do it. Uh, I'm going to go bold, bitch. I'll see you later. Kirk and Rashida is at Frost Bistro. That's this new restaurant that they didn't open up, right? Now, the restaurant is nice. It's a nice little atmosphere. The food is popping. But the only problem is niggas got to wait 20, 30 minutes to get their goddamn food. So, they got all their kids, plus probably their kids' friends working up in there. You know, it's a bunch of fucking teenagers, young adults in there, fucking up shit. Ain't taking nothing serious. So, all these customers is out there waiting on their goddamn food, right? Everybody out there mad as hell. Kirk and Rashida finally come like, look, they go and talk to their son, Kai. I don't know if he's like a manager or what he is. They like, look at nigga, I need you to tighten up. Nigga, you one of the oldest ones here. We looking at your ass to get out here and do something. What the hell you need to goddamn do? Not up here ordering chicken when y'all supposed to be having serving chicken at table 19. Nigga, we can't be doing that. Then they say that um, 
They're pressed. Houston, I still ain't went to that press store in Houston. I got to go to that. Soon as this Rona shit done cleared up, hopefully I can make it over there because I want to go to Pressed Houston. He says that the store there ain't doing good. Check this out. They paid Rashida's mama a nice little salary to run Pressed Houston. She done went and opened up her own little clothing store selling press, uh, selling uh, plus size clothing. Done said to hell with your, with your shit. And she off doing her own damn shit. Now, Rashida and Kirk say they gonna holler at her mama about that later. But right now, we got to focus on these niggas that ain't getting chicken at table 19. This fucking up our goddamn Yelp reviews, man. Y'all, this next it. It wasn't funny. But Sierra and Briscoe, Scrappy and Bambi end up going ice skating. I thought it was funny to see them niggas out there on that little, <laughs> the, the little head cap thing. They try to... Try to do out there when you skate. You know they give it to you at the skate ring too. Little thing they get to hold your little ass up so you ain't be falling down, busting your ass. Sierra and Bambi end up talking, y'all. Sierra break down in her telling she might be going to jail. It was just fun. I mean, it wasn't funny to me, but the way she broke down would be going to jail one day. That I don't know. That shit took me out. Lord forgive me. Lord forgive me. That that shit wasn't funny. That wasn't funny at all. Anyways, it's the night of Kirk and Rashida's 20-year anniversary party. Everybody's kicking it. Carly Red shows up looking all uncomfortable in the face. She looked real injected and she looked like a face hurt. <laughs> the bitch is like a goddamn face hurt, right? Now she says that um she ends up sitting down next to Sierra. Her and Sierra end up talking. Sierra's like, look here, I need you to be there for me for this little court thing that I'm having. My baby daddy ain't shit. He act like he don't want to be there. So, bitch, I need you to testify on my behalf since you was there. Now, I guess this must have happened at the funeral or something. Because Carly was like, I was right there at the funeral. And she didn't lay a hand on her. So, I'm like, I don't know, child. But Carly does say... You want me, but she's saying I can look professional because she ain't said it to her. She wants me to be there for her for what she going through. But when I'm going through my shit, I feel like she ain't been there for me when I need her. So later on, they don't have that little tip for tat little issues with that little shit or whatever, right? Child, next thing you know, Akbar V and Alexis Scott show up uninvited. They come in now. They do speak to Kirk and Rashida, but Alexis kind of slides right on through. Rashida and Kirk, after she speaks to him, Rashida's like, oh, bitch, that was rude. Like, what the fuck she do that for? The bitch starts taking off her shoes, runs right up on Carly Red. Bitch, what's up? I thought you said she was going to spit in my mama's face. This nice little old 20 year anniversary party that they having, Alexis Sky came, shut all that shit down. Next thing you know, once security steps in, y'all already know how Carly Red do. She get all big and swole, like she big and bad. She jumping over shit, knocking shit over. Security come in, break everything down. They throwing shit. Rashida's pissed off. She leaves her own damn party because she's like, you bitches didn't just ruin the whole goddamn atmosphere. Can't take you hoes no goddamn well. Mama D goes in for another surgery. Um, of course, Ernest is there. She love her some goddamn Ernest. Scrap. Um, Bambi and the baby is all there. He had on this little cute little doctor outfit. That was so cute. They go in, you know, give her kisses, wish her well. Um, this is her fourth surgery that she is having since all of this has happened. Like, she had a real bad infection. It went in her blood. Like, she almost died from all of this shit, right? And then last, we end with Carly Red in a goddamn funeral home. Like, she looking over this casket like she about to cry. Girl, Mimi, come in. Like Rashida come in, couple different people come in, and he go Carly Red over this goddamn casket. Y'all ain't no telling what goddamn. Y'all know Carly Red. She she just does the most, y'all. She gets on my damn nerves. She does the most. But y'all, hopefully y'all like this review. Um, hopefully it gets better throughout the season. I have no doubt that it will. I want to meet who this light skinned Keisha chick is. Everybody been talking about light skinned Keisha. I got to see. I got to know who the hell she is because she like she's going to be good and ratchet and I'm here for it. Look here, if it was anything that I missed, y'all already know. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.